Hello and welcome to Video Revealed. I'm Colin Smith. Let's look at how to record and edit a virtual choir or also remote musicians. All right, there are two parts to this. First is uh, basically talking about what it what you need from musicians uh, remotely to give you, and then the next part is about editing in Premiere Pro. Um, I'll put a link uh, below if you need to jump to the Premiere Pro part. So, uh, okay. So the question I get. So first of all, hopefully you saw my uh, music video with a bunch of remote musicians. I uh, uh, I posted last week where I had a bunch of musicians playing. Here is an example right here. We've got different screens showing up with different musicians. Hey buddy, what you doing? And it goes through with a lot of different screens. And we even have lots of musicians here. So. The question um, I usually get is, how do you get all the musicians to play at the same time remote? You don't, there's no way to do that. There are services to do that, but you have to pay money for that. That's not what we're talking about. The easiest solution is this. If you're the creator of this or the producer, then you've got some sort of guide track, or maybe in my case, I recorded all the parts as a demo track, and then I would send it to each one of the musicians. So I would, I would play the guitar part, and then I would send two versions, one with the guitar part so the guitarist would know how to play it uh, or what I'm intending for them to play. And then I would give them another version, and that's what they would use as a guide track. So the guide track helps you as a musician know where you are in the song. So you have a count in and then the song continues. If you're reading music, then you're reading a number of bars and maybe you don't need a guide track, but uh, even if somebody played a piano and had a, a guide track, you know where you are. So you need to listen to the song as a musician or a singer, and you need to record your voice or your instrument. The two cannot be playing at the same time or else you're gonna have problems. Um, so you have to isolate just your voice. So if you're using a computer and you're a Creative Cloud user, then you can use Adobe Audition. Adobe, you, you take the guide track, drop it into one track, and you record yourself on the next track. Pretty easy to do. Um, if the remote person doesn't have that, then they can use something like a free uh, product on, on uh, iOS or Mac OS, they can use GarageBand where you can import the guide track and then you can sing on a second track. And when you export, you turn off the guide track and just use your vocal, or you could just delete the guide track and export out your vocal. Now on, uh, on Android, I found something called Band Lab, and I'll put a link in the description. Band Lab is free. It's a little bit uh, tricky. It can still do the same thing. You can import the guide track, sing along on a second track, export out your, your song and, and give it to the editor. It's Band Lab is built for social sharing. You don't have to use it for that. So you have to go through a few screens and sign up. It's, it's free. You just you know use, uh, create a log on uh, account um, and then you start recording and um, export out the song. So if, if you're already a musician and, you, and you're dealing with other musicians, then they know to record in a quiet environment uh, with not a lot of reflective surfaces. But a lot of people don't know that, uh, especially if this is a school choir. So you have to tell people to you know, go into your bedroom or go into the living room, places with a lot of soft surfaces, beds, couches, rugs, carpet. Don't go into a reflective room that you might think, well, the bathroom's quiet. Well, the bathroom is also very, very noisy and reflective. It sounds good to you, but it's awful to record. So don't do that. Uh, it, it will be bad for the editor to try to get that out. Now, the other way to do this is to record your part and then to record the video as a lip sync. And that's what 
almost all the musicians uh, here did. Actually, Drew, who's the upright bass player, was the only one that was recording his video at the same time he was uh, recording his audio. And that's okay. It's just, I was going to take at least, you know, 10 takes on my vocals and then chop that up and comp it so that they're real nice. And then I just played the sound loud in this room. This is where I recorded it. So the, the whole room was loud. The microphone wasn't even on. And so when you see me singing, when you see me singing here, the room is really, really loud. I'm not using that audio for anything other than sync. And you definitely want to keep the audio to sync. So that's the next step. Uh, you, you record your audio video, put that all together, send it to the editor. Some people sent, uh, well, most people sent uh, separate tracks that I had to line everything up. Um, or they they uh, um, they sent their audio and, and actually, I didn't mix the song and produce the song in Premiere Pro. Uh, I'm a big fan of a lot of virtual instruments and because Audition doesn't have that, I use Steinberg Cubase. So I took everybody's audio, brought it into Cubase. You can get that for Mac or Windows, or if you're a Logic user or a Pro Tools, it's the same thing. You bring all the audio in, you mix your song, and then you export that out. And because you started with a guide track, every single mix you have is the same timing over and over and over again. So it doesn't matter. Some of these musicians were like, eight months ago, and then other musicians were added, all they know is that they played their part and I'm doing the fine tune. So I could do the mix right up to the end. So then I export out a stereo track, I import everybody's video, and that's where we're gonna start in Premiere Pro. All right, so I've got all the tracks here, and I've got all the audio, and the only audio that I'm going to save is this track here, that is, the final music track. Oh, and I've got a, a cut in here from earlier. Let me uh, join that. Okay, so to protect from cuts like that, <laughs> you want to lock that track. So with the music track locked, it's never going to move. Um, you're going to sync everything up to that music track and make sure it's in place. And because they're all following a guide, it's not about time code. Because they start on one, two, three, four, start the song, then everybody's going to be going to be in sync because they're following that same guide track. Now, let me show you something I thought of later. Uh, this is a good idea to help with sync. Oh, that's the whole music video. So here we go. That's the music track. So in your music program, because you're probably recording to a click, um, it's a good idea to have a click for two bars at the beginning. And it sounds like this. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then the music starts. So what you do is you tell the remote, remote uh, choir or remote musicians to hit their instrument or clap their hands at the beginning of the second bar. So it's like this. Two, three, four. Two, two, three, four. So you don't count, but you clap right there. So you end up with a clap, which is just like a clapper so that everybody has that spike and it would look like one of these, that spike. Uh, so it's easier to line up. I thought of that later. So <laughs> here's what I did is I brought in, I, I opened up the, the file in the source monitor here. And if we zoom in, all right, I don't know, 
I think I must have moved Raymond's. Yeah, there we go. That's it. Okay. All right. So I put a marker right at the beginning here. So he's playing a little bit here. He's probably checking his signal, which I didn't use any of that because he's not at the beginning. But I put a marker in here for each one of the musicians. So there's Mike. And you see, so all of them are located down here in the timeline. So they're all located. And now I can mute all of their tracks. So I'll hold the shift key and, and tap and press M to mute, and then I'll unmute unmute our, our main track. So what a lot of people will do at this point is they'll delete all the unused uh, tracks. I'm a little bit paranoid. I don't. I just I leave them muted just in case something shifts and I need to move it because it's easier to tell if you're out of sync with the video if you listen to the audio because it's music. It's It's got beats. It's very, very simple. If, if you remove that completely, then you're kind of watching them play their instrument and it's not as easy. So I leave that, but you can delete that if you want. Here's the other thing. Let's look at, at uh, Deb's track. And I'll tell you what's different here. So Deb did not sing through the whole song. She started in on the on the first verse, uh, first chorus, and then she came in through the, the middle eight and then the ending. So that's why you see all of these different parts recorded. And she was doing a lip sync, which is very hard because she sang ad libs. So she had to match her ad libs as best and she did a great job. What I did for this was I actually put the music track in. This is a separate sequence. I put the sequence, the music track in here with her, all of her parts, and uh, I moved the sync manually. So uh, Premiere Pro, you should be able to select all of these and synchronize. Uh, Premiere Pro's sync capability is not always the best. Um, that's why I did this by adding those markers or for Deb's track, I, I just listened and placed them all in, in the, uh, in the right spot. Cause she's starting and stopping her camera, her phone camera, uh, to record this. So once I had, uh, her part here, then you can see it's, it's dark there. And she comes in and sings here and there. And then she does the ad libs at the end. So this is a sequence in a sequence. That's why that looks green. And the rest of these are just clips. Jeff here, the same thing. He's in a, a sequence because he gave me 720p footage for this track. He gave me two tracks. Um, and I need to work with HD. So I blew this up a bit, stuck it in an HD sequence, and then I put the sequence in a sequence. So these are nested sequence, the rest are just clips. All right, so now are we ready to start cutting this up? Okay. So you can keep that, that in if you want. Um, I'm going to use a keyboard shortcut, which is Control Shift K or Command Shift K on the Mac, and that's cut everything, uh, add an edit to everything. So now every single thing is cut, except, of course, the music track. So now that starts. And... The only people playing on this opening are Mike Electric and Jeff Keys. So what I could do, I can see down here, you can see the music track. That's where the rest of the band comes in. And I'm just going to tap the E key after I, uh, I click on the end 
and add an edit point and then tap E. E is a keyboard shortcut for extend edit to playhead. So wherever the playhead is, it jumps over to that point. It's just a quick way to do this. All right, so this is now just Mike and, and Jeff. So I'm gonna put another cut right here so that these are separate. And this is what you're going to be doing over and over again as you cut different segments. And the, the, the amount of, of that segment is completely up to you. Um, my only suggestion is try not to always make it even. Try to be a little bit more creative and it doesn't always have to be on the beat. Uh, so here's the opening, but right now Mike is hiding Jeff. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to add two effects, crop and transform, and that will allow us to control every clip and we can set how big that clip is and then how big the clip is inside that. So I'll show you what I mean. So in the effects, type transform and you'll see transform and crop. So with Mike selected in our effects controls, if you double click transform, you add transform, double click crop, you add crop. So now we've got two effects in here. I'll show you how this works. I'll type in 20% for each one. So now we've cropped Mike into a smaller piece. The reason I use transform here is because I can position him inside that. Ooh, now I've got a lot of freedom. I've got the overall position, the crop, and then the position inside. To change the overall position, that's where you use the motion settings and move that over to here. Now for him, I'm going to change the, uh, the crop Instead, we're going to, let's reset that, and we'll set the crop on the right a little bit. And then I'll scoot him over. And you notice that I'm just mousing over these numbers. I prefer to do that than, than double-clicking on the screen, especially when you get 8, 10, 20, or 40, or 50 of these. Use the effects control panel. Okay, so now we've got... Jeff, here's an easy way to take the settings we have for Mike and apply them to Jeff. Copy, Control C, Command C, or go to the edit menu and copy. So you just select that and then right click on Jeff and paste attributes. You can also go to the edit menu, paste attributes, and there's a keyboard shortcut, Control Alt V on Windows, Command Option V on the Mac. And you can see paste attributes comes up with everything that the, that Mike has on him. He's got motion settings. He's got transform and he's got crop settings. Mm. So if I click OK, now Jeff is in the exact same position. So if we go all the way up to motion and drag him over to the right, now we've got a split screen of both of these guys. And Jeff's position, I could, if I drag him down, it cuts his head off. That, this camera angle was mostly for the, his keyboard, so there's a limited amount that I can go to. Okay, so that's our first opening section. And then the, the whole band comes in. And not Deb, she's not singing yet, so I'm just going to move her down. All right, so next up, let's see where we're going to cut this. What you doing? I want to see your ugly face. This world's so damn confusing. I run out of entertainment at my place. So I'm going to cut that there. Command shift K, control shift K, and then I've cut all of that. Now I'm going to work on this section and I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I want to place seven of the videos using the same technique, scale, uh, uh, the transform setting with scale, crop, and then the motion settings. To make this easier, I'm going to load in my uh, split screens that will give me the, the, all the animation and size and position information. 
Okay, and you can get these from the Video Revealed store. So you just import that, click OK. And if we look at this with icon view, it might take a second to load, but you'll see all of the different split screens. And you really have to start having some patience because even on this computer, trying to play nine uh, streams of video at the same time is challenging. When you get up to 30, 40, and 50, there's no way you're going to play them. So you're going to have to have a lot of patience. Your output is going to look fine, but just trying to play them back, eh, not so much. So I need a seven split. So I'm going to look for a seven. So let's use this one. So I'll double click on this and open it up. So you can see there's each, there's each one of the tracks with the graphics uh, placed, the graphic bars over top. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to select number one, copy, go back over to here, select Drew, paste attributes, OK, he shows up over there, and I'll just keep going. Number two, copy, Raymond, paste attributes, and on and on and on. So let's three. And we'll jump down to five and do mic on acoustic. And then my big mug will take four. And Russ will be number six. And then Jeff will be seven. And then I'll go to mine and go to transform and move me over in the middle. So now we've got this. Hey buddy, what you doing? I wanna see your ugly face. This world's so damn confusing. I'm right out of entertainment at my place. Okay, so now I want to show you why I don't delete any of the tracks. So once I have everybody's track, I'm never going to delete them. I'm going to enable or disable the ones I don't need. So we have a two screen, seven screen. Let's say we want a four screen, four up. So I'll cut this right here, again, using the same thing. And I'm going to disable some of these. So let's uh, disable Drew. And if you right click, you'll see enable with a check mark. And if you select that, it turns dark. Now, I can't even remember what the default keyboard shortcut is. It's too hard. So I changed it to shift E. You could do that easily on Mac Windows. Shift E, and you can select one or multiple tracks, enable them or disable them at any time. So I'm going to disable three more or two more. So we'll do Raymond. I'll get rid of Mike, me. So now we've got Raymond, Mike, Russ, and Jeff. So now I'll look for a four up. I'll open that up and same thing. Copy that one. Paste attributes. Copy. Paste, attributes, copy that, paste attributes, and then the last one is Jeff, four, copy that, 
paste attributes. Okay. All right. So I purposely picked Jeff's clip here because it's it's big, but it's not a flattering clip. It's not working. So I want to show you how you can you can use the effects that are applied to Jeff. And let's turn on uh, Drew. Okay. So I'll select Jeff here. I'm not going to go all the way back to that split screen. I'll just select Jeff, copy, and then I'll go to Drew, enable him, paste attributes, boom. So now he's there and I'll disable Jeff. So now we've got four of them. And I can go back to Drew and he has some more room there to move him around. And you keep doing this, you keep cutting things up. Oh yeah, here's another thing. Um, the, the other great thing about having everything lined up and in sync is if you use a rolling edit, then you can change the edit point of, of where this starts or where it ends. So let's say that we wanted this to go on a little longer. My yard's too small for hockey. Or we wanted the other one to start a little bit earlier. So in the third tool, if you click and hold, you can grab the rolling edit tool, drag down, and now wherever you hit the E key, that's where that is going to... Too small for hockey. So that's where your edit point is. My yard's too small for so maybe I want it earlier, right there, E. Now, if you do it to this side, admittedly, and we hit play, that the, uh, the position may not be exactly where you want. These are the keyframes for that opening position. So it's it's you would actually have to move the keyframes at the beginning. So now we just keep going through the song and cutting things up. And what else I found was that when I got more musicians, I would have to add a track and then I would have to go back and rethink each one of mine. Oh, this is now a seven. It's now an eight. This one is, you know, a nine and it's a 10. And, and I would open up a split screen and copy and paste in that. Okay, the other thing I wanna show you is turning down the resolution. Uh, you can turn it down to, you know, uh, down to a quarter just to make things play a little easier. Like I said, it, uh, it, it takes a lot. And then the last thing I wanna show you is if you want more split screens, then I've got, version two, and that's being released. And if we open that up, there are 52 in uh, this one, there are 50 in the original one. Um, the original one was one to nine. It was missing eight. Um, I just did 50. And by the time I got up to nine, I, I had uh, maxed out. So these ones have eight. And then they have 10 up to 55. Each one of these is also animated. So if you move over top, you'll see the animation for each one. Now, these are going to take a long time to render. They're going to be really slow to play back. I mean, this one's got 55 freaking clips in it. That's 55 videos playing at one time. You're never going to be able to, to hit the space bar and play it. Now, I, I, I'm working with uh, someone out of England, Verdun Luck. I'm uh, always giving him a hand because he's creating the, he's been making these for a while uh, in person and now he's doing the virtual. He's got a great tip. If you did the 50 here, you know, let's open up this 50. There's the 55. You could 
export this out as a finished video. Either, I mean, this is is HD, but there are ways, I've got uh, a, a, a different video on how to convert these to 4K, but you could export this out as a finished video and then bring this back in and sync it up simply by moving it on the timeline. And he did that with, with his because he didn't have to render he had about 20 or 30 on the screen at, at one time, and it's just a heck of a lot easier if they're already rendered. It is one more step, and then you've got to resync, but it is something uh, worth thinking about. So there you go. That's uh, how I made the music video and uh, chopped everything up so that the final video, um, you know, has all these different parts to it. And there's lots of different split screens. And the uh, the bobblehead that you see there, the bobblehead looks like the amazing Mr. Mike Eastman here. His wife got him that bobblehead. He took a picture, sent it to me, and I close cut it in, in Photoshop. I, I had to take the arm because the the arm is moving in front of the guitar. The real bobblehead has the hand attached to the guitar, so I had to draw around it, pop the hand off, and then paint more guitar below it. I took the whole thing into After Effects and I used the puppet tool to animate the, the uh, uh, moving guitar, the moving, and then just did a little uh, particle dissolve between the two. So there you go. Uh, if you've been tasked with creating a remote uh, musician or virtual choir. Hopefully this helps you. Hopefully the uh, split screens can cut a ton of time off. If not, you can just copy and paste and, and make your own little versions uh, of the same kind of split screens. Hey, if you're new to Video Reveal and you found this informative, take a moment and subscribe. You want to support us more, you can do that on our website, videoreveal.com. That's where you can buy the split screens. You can donate once or monthly, any amount. We're so thankful to all of our wonderful monthly donors. Thank you so much. Till next time, I'm Colin Smith, and it's my job to get you creating some interesting looking videos quicker than you thought.